outstanding performance in the size for you. That's the tagline Sony uses on its website to promote the Xperia Z1 Compact, and the message is seductive. Big power without the need for a big casing. It's something we've long called for, and now Sony is saying it's here. So how does the Xperia Z1 Compact deliver? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. As we mentioned in our comparison video earlier in the week, this device comes to us on loan from our friends at Clove Technology, and we thank them for the review unit. If this phone seems like something you'd like to take home, follow our example. Visit clove.co.uk, linked in the description, and order one for yourself. Now, Compact might not be the sexiest brand name we've ever heard of, but if nothing else, it's accurate. This incarnation of Sony's premium smartphone line maintains the glass sandwich build of its bigger siblings, but slims the casing down to much more palm-friendly dimensions. The only thing that suffers as a result is the screen size, which at 4.3 inches is smaller than most modern flagships, but that's the only real hit against it. At 720p, it makes for a pixel density of 342 ppi, which on a screen like this is more than enough. Plus, we're happy to see that Sony has finally fixed its off-axis visibility problem. This display is vibrant from almost any angle. Beneath that screen is one of the very best power plants you can find in a smartphone today, Qualcomm's Snapdragon 800. It's backed up by the usual suspects in terms of GPU, RAM, and storage options, and the whole thing is wrapped up in a shatter-resistant casing that feels much more solid than its 137 grams would suggest. It's available in several colors, but the classic black with gunmetal trim is quite striking. While the port covers on the sides are just as cumbersome and clunky as ever, there is a small price to pay for the phone's water and dust resistance, a capability that in 2014 is still more rare than it should be. And though the phone is one of the easiest to dirty up with skin oil and pocket lint, its bare chassis is pretty enough that you probably won't want to cover it up with a case. Looks, feel, pocketability, power. Sony is in great form with the Z1 Compact's hardware. The company is no slouch in software either, at least in terms of aesthetics. Yes, this is skinned Android, which means that yes, we're looking at an older software build with delayed updates and all the other sacrifices that come with it, but what you get in exchange isn't some stuttering mishmash of nonsense. It's pretty. It's cohesive. And it almost never bogs down, even when the phone is doing a lot of work in the background. That said, we do have some complaints. Some apps which run very well on other Android phones don't do so well on Sony's skin. Google Maps, in particular, crashes pretty routinely, which is annoying. The hardware camera key is a great shortcut for launching the camera right from standby, but sometimes it just doesn't work. And Chrome has a strange bug that results in random zooming unless you're using the very tip of your finger all the time. These are oddities we also encountered on the Xperia Z1S, so it seems pretty clear that Sony's skin across the whole line could use an update. Here's hoping that update doesn't change the camera, though, because this thing is a joy to shoot with. From the fun to the practical, the Compact has it all, bundled up in an easy-to-use viewfinder. And though there's no OIS, the digital stabilization makes for a very smooth shooting experience on screen. It's all wonderfully thought out and executed. Sony's also put a lot of work into solving its image quality problems of the past. The Compact's 20.7 megapixel camera defaults to an oversampled 8 megapixels out of the box, but you can shoot in full resolution using manual mode, it's a shame that mode doesn't offer more tweakability. We especially miss manual focus. But you'll probably be better served by Superior Auto anyway. This automatic mode does a very nice job tailoring the camera's settings for different lighting situations. And the digital noise that was characteristic of Sony smartphones has really, really been toned down here. It's still there if you look hard enough particularly in low-light shots where the device is apparently doing a lot of post-processing, so we're still not in Lumia territory here. You'll probably want to switch to manual mode to try amping up the exposure rather than resorting to the flash in low-light situations. The so-called flash bleed problem doesn't show up in every shot, but it's definitely there in some. 
In camcorder mode, the compact is impressive. Automatic shooting and good lighting produces video that's a pleasure to look at. Colors are well balanced, automatic adjustments are speedy, and sound capture is a little muddled compared to other devices, but it's clear enough for most situations. Underwater video comes out crisp and clean, with the autofocus still nice and snappy, just like the still shots. If you've watched our camera test of the Xperia Z1S, this won't come as a surprise. It's the same hardware, and it does just as good a job here. Sony's claim of the best camera on a waterproof, compact smartphone <laughs> is awfully narrow. But as far as we can see, it's also spot on. For full-size versions of these photos, and many more shots, see our full review at Pocket Now, linked in the description below. We tested the Z1 Compact over a six-day period between Massachusetts and Maine on T-Mobile's 3 and 4G networks. We didn't run into many reception problems, and battery life was reasonably solid, though it varied a little more than we're used to seeing. On its first charge, we used it quite heavily, and it endured for over 10 hours. But that kind of endurance wasn't consistent, possibly due to our office being in a fringe coverage area. Voice calls were quite nice on our end, with crisp, loud side tone and plenty of earpiece volume, though callers didn't seem to understand us quite as well as when we used other phones. Gaming, as you might expect with a Snapdragon 800 inside, is excellent. About the only place the Z1 Compact is truly underwhelming is in its speakerphone. Even when bone dry, it's a thin sounding, tinny little module that's easy to accidentally block with a finger despite that huge grill. With a price tag north of $500, we'd expect nothing less than premium level performance from the Z1 Compact, petite package or no. And fortunately, we're left with a smartphone that delivers just that. It loses points for audio performance and a slightly buggy and already outdated build of Android, but it gains a whole lot too for delivering on the promise of a palm-sized smartphone with almost no compromise. Our numeric score is available in our full review at Pocket Now, so we'll close here by saying, if big phones aren't your bag, your hunt for mid-sized quality should definitely begin with a very close look at the Xperia Z1 Compact. One more time, folks, if you want more details about our impressions of the Z1 Compact, we have a lot more that we couldn't fit in this video, but that we did fit in the full written review. Check it out. It's the first link in the description below, the full review at Pocket Now, including sample photos you didn't get a chance to see in this video and a whole lot more. And be sure and visit our friends at Clove, clove.co.uk, if you want a Z1 Compact of your very own. Before you go anywhere, like this video, please, if you did enjoy it, and drop us a comment down below if you have some follow-up feedback, a question. And be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss future content on the Z1 Compact and every other smartphone and tablet and wearable we can get our hands on. Until next time, it's been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.